afternoon, everybody. Welcome and uh, thanks for coming. Um, you notice that the title um, is a bit grandiose. Uh, I didn't write that. My, uh, my boss wrote that. Unfortunately, I did create the slide, so, uh, and I forgot to check the scaling. Um, so it didn't come out quite the way I wanted to. This is what we'll actually be talking about. Um, I've been working with uh, a, a bunch of people on getting OpenShift on OpenStack and making it a, a seamless, easy, uh, well, relatively. We all know how easy, what easy means here. Um, I work at the, uh, on an end-to-end -end team at Red Hat. Um, okay, I work on an end-to-end -end team at Red Hat. And what we do is we take bits from the OpenShift team, from the Open, OpenStack engineering team, we jam them together, we find out uh, what parts poke us in the eye um, and what parts, and try and get those people the information so that when you get to it, it doesn't poke you in the eye. Um, I was actually listening to a talk earlier uh, in the sessions and somebody said, why would I use OpenShift if I already had Kubernetes? Um, and it's actually a good question if you look at it on the face because Kubernetes is actually exposed directly in OpenShift. But Kubernetes actually fills a very specific space. It prepares uh, a host for, to run containers for you and it builds a cluster between them, but it doesn't really have a whole lot of brains and it doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, nice features for monitoring. And that's actually a deliberate thing on the part of the Kubernetes team. They have a very, uh, very strict scope. Um, we add features to OpenShift and when they find things that are in their scope, there's an upstream and downstream movement of the features. But there are definitely things in OpenShift that, um, that Kubernetes doesn't offer and probably will never offer, which are, are niceties for use, but not critical for, um, for the operation, for the strict operation. And so OpenShift gives you uh, a nice uh, Windows, a uh, nice uh, graphical user interface. It gives you some uh, project management. It gives you the ability to, to do a little more controlled isolation between the projects. Um, so if you're looking at Kubernetes and you're looking at OpenShift and going, what's the difference? There's an answer for you. Um, the second question I heard was, why OpenShift on OpenStack? Uh, you've got this great expandable container thing. Um, why would I want to run it on a second virtualization? And there's really two aspects of that. One is that I seem to get people who are confused that containers are somehow another kind of virtual hosts. And they're really significantly different things. Um, OpenStack virtualizes hosts and infrastructure. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with that. What OpenShift does is it virtualizes the applications so OpenShift consumes the infrastructure that OpenStack provides. And OpenShift is designed to be able to scale out its compute nodes at, on demand. It'll tell whatever its infrastructure is, hey, I'm running low on resources. I need more nodes. Um, OpenStack provides the ability to, to scale it out automatically. And I can't see why you would take this scalable uh, virtualization service and put it on a rigid hardware. Um, it'll work, but it, it, the two are complementary. Um, and uh, something I forgot to mention when I was talking about the group that we're, we're, I'm writing a document which describes this in some detail. We're doing it in parallel. We're doing it for uh, a number of different cloud services, and I'm just working on the OpenStack one. Um, this is a virtual a visualization of what a kind of a typical OpenShift installation would look like. Um, it's hard to point with stuff here. Uh, it really has f three major components. It has an infrastructure server, which is there, which isn't really part of the OpenShift service, but it's there to provide the scaling help. Uh, when we need scaling, something needs to, to make the calls to heat, to, uh, to increase the size, add the, the, the new nodes, and we have a dedicated server for that. Um, the second one, which is actually OpenShift, is a cluster of OpenShift masters. And if you see the blue network, load balance network, we put a load balancer in front so your users only see one, uh, one host name, one IP address. But the, the master services are clustered behind it and are load balanced so that you have a certain amount of HA. The, uh, the other piece with the red network is the OpenShift compute nodes. They uh, provide the, the location for the containers. That's where your kublets are running. That's where your containers are running. Um, and OpenShift also provides uh, 
They call it an OpenShift router. I find that a misnomer. It's really a reverse proxy. Um, so again, you get a single inbound connection for your users to your containers, and it, uh, it proxies it to the, appropriate, um, to the appropriate nodes so that you don't have to worry about which one it's on. And you don't actually have to manage DNS for each of those things. Um, OpenShift does that for you with a wildcard. <coughs> it also, OpenShift will provide uh, a local registry specifically for your developers. So they're not going out to Docker Hub or they don't have to go out to Docker Hub uh, to pull down their containers. They're actually contained in it and you can use OpenShift as your, your development uh, s location. You can do your complete development cycle within OpenShift and keep all of your containers local. Um, it both speeds up the caching um, and it gives you a, a, an element of privacy if you're working in a, in a private network. Um, and then the last piece is that the nodes themselves uh, can scale out horizontally. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how that's automated in a minute. But the important part about this is that there's really two views of this. There's the world's view, which is three IP addresses, two of which are sort of public and one of which is merely for the administrators of the service. Um, the users don't see all of this. Um, we see it. And we have to make it happen. We have to make it all work together and hide the, the minutia from the users. Um, the next question I get is why integrate OpenShift on OpenStack? OpenShift runs just fine on bare metal. It, uh, you know, it, it uses some storage and it uses some other stuff, but you could just deploy this stuff as a series of VMs without OpenShift being aware that it's on OpenStack and it would run just fine. But there are some niceties that you wouldn't get and uh, there are some things that OpenStack offers that it'd be really nice to take advantage of and that's, uh, some of the work I'm doing and some of the work that the, uh, the OpenShift on OpenStack guys are doing is as much as possible taking advantage of the OpenStack resources that are available. Um, there, there are some obvious ones, the networking uh, through Neutron. Um, as you saw in that previous diagram, the red network there is actually a really critical one because that's actually an internal uh, pseudo network used by OpenShift to connect the containers to each other. So if you've got multiple containers running in a, in a complex application, you want to be able to control and isolate that traffic. Um, and there's some special networking that goes on to do that. On a, on a bare metal system, there's a feature called the OpenShift SDN where they actually build a, a custom invisible uh, Open vSwitch network when you go to do that on OpenStack, if you just let that run, what you end up with is two-layer virtual, two virtualized network, which, again, it works, but it doesn't really take advantage of some of the optimizations that a single layer will do because the upper layer is unaware of any optimizations you may have set up. Um, that's still not... That's still fairly true right now. Right now, if you're setting up an OpenShift on OpenStack, we recommend that you use the, the Flannel plugin, which creates a flat network. And I like to call Flannel, it's, it's kind of a misnomer, but I like to call Flannel a, uh, a circuit switch network. It's not doing full layer two, layer three switching. It just takes uh, a packet destined for an IP address. It has a complete lookup table for the entire Flannel network. It goes, that packet goes over there and it appears on the other virtualized host and goes through and get, gets your, your communications. So at this point, um, OpenShift on OpenStack ideally is not really using Neutron to its fullest extent. There's a feature coming in Makata. Uh, it was originally called uh, uh, VLAN Aware VMs and I think now it's called trunk port. It's in Makata, but it's not in the, the re most recent RDO releases. So as uh, the capabilities of Neutron advance, we'll be revisiting how the ne uh, OpenShift uses the networking and how we recommend that we use the networking. Um, that should be in the next six months or so. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the other pieces to look at are storage for shared or persistent data. Um, identity management, orchestration, publication. I'm going to move forward on my slides now. Um, I covered most of this. Um, we're gonna, I'm looking at the trunk port now to see if we've got a way to actually create 
individual VLANs for applications, where you might have several containers spread over an OpenShift uh, that um, need to communicate with each other, and that you can keep the the point-to-point -point communications isolated so that different tenants are completely unaware of each other and have no, no way of sharing. Um, again, that'll be in the future. Um, this is also going to require, getting this to work is also going to require updates to uh, Kubernetes, similar to those for Cinder, uh, where Kubernetes now can uh, directly mount Cinder volumes into containers for you uh, in preparation for starting up your containers. Um, which takes us on to storage. The, one of the first ways that um, OpenShift can use uh, the OpenStack resources directly is, that, um, is to mount storage in either for persistent storage, which isn't really as important for most of this stuff, because this, this space I'm looking at here is used by Docker on each host for the containers. Docker often will want lots of space, and rather than having to create larger and larger flavors, so that you've got enough local storage. Um, OpenShift can use Cinder, where it will just create a volume for, for you of the appropriate size. You can keep the flavor of your instance as small as you need, or you know, use a stock one and just add more persistent storage or add more uh, Cinder storage. And um, the OpenShift on OpenStack setup will do this for you automatically. The second place, which is really cool, and I didn't even know this worked until yesterday. I saw somebody do it yesterday, and I have to go back and writing my paper. Um, Kubernetes has the capability of mounting Cinder volumes into your containers, and OpenShift has the ability to expose Kubernetes for you. What I thought you'd have to do is create a volume and um, create a volume in OpenStack, and then hand OpenShift the volume ID and it would mount that into your container. It appears that OpenShift has the ability to create the volume for you and then, uh, and then mount it in automatically, hiding from you the fact that it's Cinder at all once, the once it's set up. I need to actually research that because I haven't seen it. For identity management, um, we recommend that you backend both OpenStack and OpenShift with a single LDAP or AD server. That gives you the ability to have unified um, uh, user management, and you can set policies at that level which allow you to, um, to control which users can see which services. Um, this is the big one, and I'm actually running out of time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into it and talk about people later. All of the stuff I've been showing you is now orchestrated by uh, a heat stack that's uh, under development. You can start up the stack, it'll run it out, and the stack implements all of these pieces, including uh, solometer metric metering and um, and auto scaling of the nodes. Um, one thing that's not in there yet is DNS, and again, that uh, as Designate comes into uh, the Red Hat and RDO setup, we'll be integrating that as well. Um, seriously, Google OpenShift on OpenStack. We've been looking at this for a long time, but we're just now getting where the integration is good. Um, and here's a bunch of uh, of links to the various pieces. Um, as far as the last two, feel free to contribute. Those are GitHub, those are open source projects. We're working on them actively. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>